Entry level mining information. Welcome to Australian Mining for New Starters and today we're going to do the prices, talk about some news and give a shout out to one of the students that recently got a job. But let's start with the prices and the news that's going on. And first off, Copper's hit the 10,000 US mark or it's nearing to hit an all time mark so it's going very very high and so it is $12,889 Australian at the moment which is one of the highest prices I've ever seen it in the market and it's why there are so many jobs going at the moment in the underground copper mines in Queensland and New South Wales. So if we have a look go on from there and have a look at nickel. Nickel's travelling at $22,644 a ton which means everybody's making lots of money and again that's why everybody's trying to reopen their nickel mine if we move on to gold it's at two thousand two hundred ninety two dollars an ounce which is um, a bit higher than it was a couple of weeks ago when we last looked at it but it's still below the highs of six months ago one of the things I just wanted to have a look at is some of the consumable areas that gold's used a lot of people don't realize gold's used in space and so I don't know about anybody else but this came as a huge surprise to me that they've actually launched a space station or are in the process of launching one they've launched the first command module and apparently there's another 10 or 12 modules to be launched the reason reason that I bring this up is that these modules that go up and satellites that go up are full of gold. They have to use it because of um, the rigors of space and it's one of the best conductors around. So the space program uses lots and lots of gold and that could be one of the reasons why China has lifted their um, import ban on gold from a number of different countries around the world. It's, it's a growing industry that a lot of people weren't aware about. I know I wasn't aware about it, but that makes, um, for, makes a lot more sense about why they're buying so much gold at the moment. It's going into other projects. Now, if we move on to iron ore, and iron ore has set a record price. And again, with China ramping everything up, including their space industry, this is probably why they're going through a lot of iron ore with all the different projects of building facilities and infrastructure around that. So if we look at the price, it is $238 a tonne, which means the Treasury in Australia is going to be really happy and Western Australia is going to make a fair bit of money out of that as well. But you'll notice there still aren't a lot more job ads going. The reason being is most of these iron ore mines are halfway through trying to change themselves over to driverless trucks. So again, if you want to go and have a look at that, there's some videos that I've done on that in the past that you can have a look at. Lastly, coal. And coal's moved up to $96 Australian a tonne, which is good. Any movement up in the upward direction for coal is good, but it's still in that range where a lot of mines are just breaking even or even just losing a little bit of money. So we'd like to see that go a bit higher than that. Before I move on to the long shot holes and the owner operators, I just want to give Andrew a shout out gave him a shout out on the Facebook page and he wrote something back to us that I just wanted to read because it really encapsulates why you do the training and why you do the, the intro to underground mining or the DIY package to get yourself in the best possible position to get the job and then um, advance through it. So um, thanks for all your help mate. Once again, can't recommend the course enough. Made it uh, made getting a start a lot easier and also got the gig. My underground knowledge was far better than the other new starters in my induction group, which led to getting passed out on the truck the fastest. Hopefully that'll put me in good stead to be the next person in line to go nippering or onto the service crew. Now, that's exactly what it does. If you're the first person passed out, if you're the person that's up and running and working without supervision the quickest, that gets noticed. And a lot of other people that can't find their feet and can't get themselves up to working um, by themselves quick enough will be let go. And that's the other reason why you're trying to do the training is to get your foot on the door and then make the most of the opportunity. So well done, Andrew. Now let's have a look at the long shot holes because the WA government has just given a mining company um, 120 grand to do a couple of 600 metre holes. And the reason that they're doing the 600 metre holes is just to confirm that the ore body is still open at depth at that range. Now you can't take it to the shareholders or you can't borrow money on it um, but a lot of mines do long shot holes just to confirm that the ore body is still going so the super pit did some about a decade ago to two kilometers below the super pit and it was still going and sunrise dan dam and tropicana have both done long shot holes down to about the three kilometer mark and just to make sure that the ore body is still there and still going as i said you can't 
um, model that or you can't take that to the, the, sh the share market and say it's a proven resource. But what it does is it gives you a good indication on what's under there and what you're going to um, head towards. To be able to take it to the stock exchange a as a provable asset, it has to be diamond drilled um, to great extent. And most companies can only afford to do that to 200 meters. Um, some of the bigger companies can afford to do that to four or 500 meters, but not the, the, the deep long shot holes that they have to do for the underground mines. So I hope that explains why they do long shot holes. Next, I'd like just to talk about owner operators. And this is a story about a mine in Victoria that's buying its own gear and doing itself to, to save some money rather than hiring a contractor in. So it's pretty self-explanatory, the owner operator thing. Instead of hiring a contractor in like Barminko or Burncard or Ruck or Prybar or one of the other big ones, they just simply buy the gear themselves, hire a foreman and hire the miners themselves. Now there's good things about being with an owner operator and there's bad things about being with an owner operator good things are that you there's a lot of job security normally you become part of a shareholder plan they try and give you shares um, sometimes the bonuses are good the downside is that sometimes the wages can be a little bit lower than what the contractors are paying and you can get stuck in a role if you're not if you're not prepared to move around if you're only prepared to stay at that mine sometimes you can get pinholed into a into a mid-tier job and not get the advancement that you would get if you wanted to um, hop off to a different mine so but that's all the swings and roundabouts for it so i hope that explains owner operating and the long shot holes and if you've got any more questions please let me know and again congratulations to andrew who um, did the work ready course and got himself a job on a truck well done and if you could like and subscribe the channel thanks